Good morning, folks. Reporting today from the Internet Forsaken Mountains north of the New Valley of the Sun. Making it work anyway, as we've got a key set of updates today starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were quiet. The departure of the northern active regions is now well underway. Patchy coronal holes grace the south, but they are small. The solar wind is quiet, too. All variability here is within normal range, and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, with 48 hours plus of zeros and ones on the KP index. Folks, I'm going to have to call the UFO on SOHO a comet. Now three days after being spotted, we can see its curve as it begins to exit the frame. And it's now visible on Stereo A, HI1, sprouting a little tail. Still believe we're not alone in the universe, but orbital dynamics aside, there was never going to be much to go with on this one. Top quake of the last day was in North Carolina, epically rare for the region and the largest there in a long time. Its placement within the Appalachian Range points to a separation from the New Madrid fault system, which must have been on many of your minds yesterday. Rough flooding situation in the Middle East, it's hit India, Iran, here Pakistan with dozens dead in the deluge. I know this looks rough, but the man survived this and is okay, just dinged up pretty good by debris. Let's go to the July U.S. climate report because we once again get to see the same story top right versus bottom left. Top right is the maximum daily temperatures. Bottom left is the daily minimum temperatures. And really, it's East Texas and Louisiana that are giving it away in this one. At night, those regions were near record hot, but they were below average temperature in the daily time maximum area. Folks, this tells a story of where the warming is. It's like this worldwide, and the distinction of nighttime modulation is utterly neglected when scientists communicate climate change science. A couple space weather items here. This one looking at how important both the kinetic parameters, the plasma density and speed, and the magnetic parameters, the phi angle and the B components, are to how geo-effective a stream of solar wind is going to be. These components, even the kinetic ones, because we're talking about the kinetics of plasma, have importance for the geomagnetic and geoelectric systems, especially in how they couple with the Earth systems, and studying aurora here to get a better idea of how those electrodynamics play out. And the heating element is the most underserved in this field. And these couplings, including the joule heating, are delivered to Earth through the ionosphere, the electric sheet layers above our heads, the ceiling of the global electric circuit, and the last line of defense and interface with energy from space before we get down to the ozone and upper atmosphere. But the penetrating fields, the magnetic resonance, the radio wave emission, and plasma pressure effects, all bombarding the ionospheric system, often taking parameters of ionospheric current systems on orders of magnitude variation, settle back down in about one minute. One minute minute. Folks, that's because it's not an ocean hit by a rock to ripple and ripple. It's a circuit, almost like the Earth membrane. The system immediately transfers this energetic change to the global electric circuit system, the helical spiraling vortex currents that go down from the sky in high pressure, run along the atmospheric boundary layers and the crust, then are returned to the ionosphere in low pressure, storms, lightning and volcanoes. The more than 50 studies showing how some space weather forcing of the weather are immediate, like within moments, this is how it happens. It's hitting an electric circuit. Folks, not only is all of that in our book, but in one hour, you can catch up on pretty much that entire realm at the Climate Forcing movie. It heads the climate playlist you have linked below the video in the description box. The rest of the playlist is only about another hour, and it contains pretty much all the rest of the details of the story. You can literally catch up to nearly half a million of us on climate in a total of two hours. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.